Hello and welcome to another episode of Teasdale Explorers. My name is Brandon here and you might be wondering why I am not holding Teasdale. And uh, that actually is uh, a good question. Our special guest for this week is Sam Hanna. He is the curatorial assistant for the Buffalo Bill Museum here at the Center of the West. Hello, Sam. Hello. And Sam actually was a volunteer with us for uh, quite a few years in the Raptor program. And so you actually have had the pleasure of working with Teasdale before this point. Yes. We thought it would be a nice way to reunite again and have you show Teasdale around the Buffalo Bill Museum. So what we're going to do today is uh, we actually had filmed this uh, a long way back, and when we filmed it, we lost the audio, or it never recorded, so oops, our bad. Uh, but uh, we're going back and kind of rehashing the wonderful tour that Teasdale got in the gallery at the time. So that's what we're going to share with you today, and we hope you enjoy our little commentary. Okay, and here we'll begin by showing Teasdale this work by German-born artist Nick Egenhoff. This depicts a scene that would have been very, very familiar to a young Will Cody who worked as a freighter on the plains. And here I'm pointing out a detail in this work that many guests are very curious about. And those, when we pan in a little later, you'll see are bells attached to the lead horses. Now those bells were known as Haim bells or Conestoga bells, and especially in uh, the tighter, more wooded regions of the east or more mountainous regions, they served to announce the presence of the oncoming team to others using the roads so they could yield the right of way. And an interesting note with those is that they became a point of pride, if you will, for the teams that carried them. And it became customary if you were stuck or in any other way required assistance while you were traveling, you would present your bells or turn them over to the team that stopped to help you. Now that could very well be the origin of our phrase or expression to arrive somewhere, to be somewhere with bells on, which would indicate a trouble-free and direct journey. Very nice. Now while Teasdale probably doesn't want to be flying at all with bells on, he's very good at hunting, and I hear Buffalo Bill was a pretty good hunter as well. Yes, and while no one would accuse Teasdale of being responsible for the near extinction of mice or something <laughs> along those lines. Um, there are those who believe that Buffalo Bill played a, a large part in the near extinction of the bison, and this really just wasn't the case. Um, he did work as a meat hunter, providing meat to the workers who were building the Kansas Pacific Railroad, but that really, you know, by today's standards, yes, that's a, a massive number of animals that he would have uh, harvested to feed those workers, but what really, really drove the, the near extinction of the bison would be the completion of the railroad and, and the market hunting that ensued, and also the opening of, of markets for bison products, especially in the east. Um, for example, their, their hides being used as belts for eastern industry, that had much more of an impact than the people who were hunting for um, sustenance, if you will, sure. or, you know, hunting for, for meat rather than the products. And it was enough to give Buffalo Bill his nickname. Yes, it certainly was, and there are a couple different stories attached to how that may have happened depending on, depending on who you believe, but he was certainly a very, very skilled hunter, and that earned him his name, nickname Buffalo Bill. Very neat. So Cody's skills with, with hunting and as a plainsman in general led to him being employed uh, by the U.S. Army as a, a scout and guide. And that was really the beginning of his, of his fame, if you will. He, he gained quite a reputation and quite a name as a dependable and, and skilled guide to the Army. And at that point, he started to also rub elbows with um, royalty and other prominent persons who at that time would actually hire the Army to take them on guided tours and hunts of the West. So this was really where Cody began his performance career, if you want to look at it like that, sort of in the same way that a modern outfitter would provide a genuine, say, Western hunting experience to some people from back East. Cody was providing that, and this is really where he would have been cutting his teeth as a performer. 
Now, Buffalo Bill gained lots of experience on the plains, and people started to write about him, I hear. We've written a lot about Teasdale uh, and shared that with lots of different people. Well, a difference here would be that what you publish about Teasdale is factual, whereas much of what was written about Cody was mostly fantasy. Um, his actions did inspire authors uh, such as Ned Buntline, Prentice Ingram, Charles King. Uh, and this is really where the regional fame that I mentioned before that he held uh, amongst the military, this is where that fame started to grow into a more national and even, even international fame. These dime novels about William F. Cody were extremely popular and they really um, launched his, his fame and his career. And man starts to become myth. Absolutely. All right. So that would launch Cody's career as a stage actor, and that would then lead to the formation of the Arenic Wild West show. Now, Teasdale, I've seen the amphitheater where you do your presentations. And here I'd like you to enjoy a, wait for it, bird's eye view <laughs> of the Wild West encampment as it was for the 1894 season in Ambrose Park, Brooklyn. Now an interesting uh, little tidbit about this was the lighting for this season was actually done by Thomas Edison. And at the time, it was the largest temporary lighting plant in existence. And here coming up is one of the most monumental moments in our filming here, where Teasdale actually goes to the bathroom and christens the Buffalo Bill Museum. Um, fun fact, this is the only bird in our program that has actually gone to the bathroom in every single museum here. So this is a, a special moment for Teasdale. The best pooper. Okay, Sam, so what are we looking at here with this map? Well, you can't see it all that well on the video, but this map is covered with pins and they indicate all of the venues where Buffalo Bill's Wild West would have performed throughout the span of their, their touring. Teasdale, you may be the hotshot of the Western Hemisphere with a very, very large range, but the range of Buffalo Bill's Wild West actually expanded into what is today's Eastern Europe. Wow. And over the roughly 30 years that the show performed, they performed approximately 4,500 times, which to put it in perspective, is about double that of, you know, one of the most prolific touring rock acts that we know, The Grateful Dead. Um, you know, roughly double the amount of shows. Holy mackerel. That's pretty impressive. Now, Teasdale is the star of our show, and there's been a little bit of competition with him and some of the other birds as far as who is the greatest. Well, and this brings us to this case, exhibiting some items owned by William F. Carver, who was Buffalo Bill's partner during his first season with the Wild West show in 1883. And they lasted only one season together, um, likely in no small part due to two large egos <laughs> Ah, Teasdale can relate for sure. Well, much like Buffalo Bill, hopefully Teasdale will have a uh, fairly successful career and uh, will live up to his fame. And uh, today we'd, we'd like to thank you very much, Sam, for spending some time with us and, and going through the museum uh, with Teasdale. He's truly appreciative and sorry about that mess back there. Thank you. And I, I could tell he was appreciative by all of the hissing. Yes, yes. And, uh, yes, Teasdale has hissing in abundance for sure. Well, Sam, if you wouldn't mind, let's take him back to his quarters. And on the way, I can show him these amazing Buffalo Bill posters here. Teasdale, check this out. There's uh, Buffalo Bill here riding a frog. That's from Italy, from one of his shows. So I'll check out all these ones. And did you know that Buffalo Bill had five 